We are roadside here on Lawrence Road. This is the AW listed um, put in for this section of the Eno. We're gonna get our Eno on. What do you say, boys? Oh yeah, New River. Yeah, be a good I, time. I think I did this one once like 18 years ago. I really don't remember it. And I did it at lower water, but got the new boat out. That's the Delta V. And uh, I mean, it's, not bad. it's getting hard to choose which boat to take, but I haven't paddled that one yet. I did, however, spend a few minutes getting it outfitted properly. So, so we're looking to have a little fun. We're gonna go all the way down to um, Green something. It's a, it's, a, it's another access way down there, so let's go have some fun. So Jerry, Adam, and I are putting in here at Lawrence Road on the Eno River, and we're gonna head down to Pleasant Green Access about seven and a half miles down river. Logs and trees would be the big thing today. So each year I get a ton of inquiries about the Eno River and I really don't know much about it. I did hike here with the kids last summer and saw this rapid up ahead and figured let's go try it out. Jerry in the rocker! Jerry is still trying to find out what the boat for him is going to be and I've got him in the rocker today, his first time in that boat, and he really liked it. It's just a matter of getting into as many boats as you can get into to find out what style of boat you prefer and what boat just feels right to you. Especially, it's like loosey-goosey, you can surf, it's just fun. It's a fun boat. You like it, don't you? <laughs> Adam may have found his boat in the Liquid Logic mullet he's paddling. He seems to really like it. It's got a lot of confidence. And that's a lot of it, finding a boat that gives you the confidence, that matches your paddling style, and then learning how to paddle it. The boat I'm in is a Delta V88 by Liquid Logic and it's basically an upgraded Pat Keller version of the Jefe Grande. And you know I love a Jefe, and so I'm just by default gonna love this boat. Surf's better than a Jefe. Oh yeah. Looks pretty straightforward. Just stay out of that tree on the left. So while it's not one of the iconic whitewater runs of the southeast, the Eno was definitely better than I expected and worth coming to, especially if you need a quick run close to home and you're in the Piedmont area. It's 4.66 on the gauge today and that's a pretty fun level. I would like to try it a little higher, I'd like to try it a little lower, but there's eddies everywhere and plenty of things to get into. And one thing to do when you're exploring a river is to go down and imagine the rapids with more and less water so you can kind of start getting a feel for what the best level is going to be. And since we've never done this run before and there's not a lot of beta on this river, we're just keeping an eye out for strainers and wood, any kind of undercuts, anything that might try to sneak up on us and maybe taking a little more conservative route than we would after we learned the river. Sometimes it's just best to play it safe on the first run. And then once you learn the river and take the unknown aspect out of it, it's time to start carving it up, looking for your hero lines and being a little more adventurous. I did take the kids hiking along this river last summer at the Eno River State Park. And down there at Fuse Ford, I know there's some very gnarly 
riverbed happening. So I'm not sure what that looks like with water, but I know it's coming up. And there's also some pretty good ledges just upstream from there. So we're all keeping an eye out for these bends in the river because sooner or later it's gonna get a little more interesting. And the deal is if you don't know where you are and you can't see through from beginning to the end, the best course of action is always to get out and scout. I'm gonna hit it and peel out so you can get in there. It wasn't as uh, exciting as I had imagined. And it doesn't look like this. We'll be fine. You can go anywhere. current in your life, you know? Yeah. I was looking at it too. <laughs> yeah, let me see what, it, what we got. Let's get out and look at it. Yeah, all this is good for eddying out. I've learned to uh, double tap like a cat. Sometimes you feel solid ground, so you get out, but it's just the tip of a really tall rock. <laughs> All right, so the Red Bull was talking to Adam, and uh, we also saw a significant horizon line, so we got the boats pulled out. I know there's a section up here that might be pretty juicy that we're gonna probably wanna scout before we run. I'm not sure where it is. I just know it's here somewhere. Uh, the kids and I were hiking here last summer, and uh, we saw this stuff, so. This is just uh, pretty much flow. There's one big pine tree down there, if you can see that. I'll walk, you get a little better view. You're really gonna wanna stay away from stuff like that. That'll end your whole day. Hopefully you would flush out from underneath it, but you never know, sometimes that stuff is piled up. So when we come through here, I'm gonna try to just eddy hop just for funds. Not that you really need to. Make the most of it. And then uh, main priority is to stay away from that log on the left. And then it looks like just a big flush at the end. So uh, let's get in and have a little fun. And so there's a little flow through here and we're just going to basically jump in and out of some eddies real quick and make the most of this rapid. Jerry is actually going to jump into that river left eddy, which makes a mandatory hairy fairy peel out. A hairy fairy is when you're getting across the river from one side to the other in front of something dangerous or somewhere you don't want to be. And it's kind of like a must make move, a mandatory thing. And if you're not comfortable doing that, then the obvious answer is to stay away from it. Oh yeah. But Jerry wanting to take his game up the next level has opted to catch this river left eddy. And then he's gonna have to peel out in front of that log. So it's not something you wanna mess up. I'm gonna try to bust through, yeah. Oh, camera wasn't on? 
Yeah. Yours what? No, I'm sure this is such a good looking move. All right, now this is a hairy fairy peel out. Right, don't mess it up. That's not a hole, that's a wave. You can jump right in it and use it to surf out. And as you can see, that log is bad juju, but Jerry handled it with ease. And if you're wanting to take your kayaking up to a higher level, you have to be okay with paddling through risky environments. And one way to do that is to force yourself to do must make moves. And that move was well within Jerry's skill set and his abilities. And while it wasn't that hard of a move for Jerry, it did pose a very high level of consequences. Getting wrapped up in that log could be fatal. So if you do not have the skills to do things like that, stay away from the logs, stay away from the strainers. Do not put yourself in the position to have to do the move if you are not a thousand percent sure you are able to. I can't quite see what's going on. Looks to be this river right flume, angling left, nose angle left. Oh, there's the hole. There's the hole. It was it was there. <laughs> I really hope I looked far enough to see that. Go quick. It's really deep there. Go quick. It's cold? Yeah, not too bad. But man, there was like right I just talked about it. There's solid ground and it was like chest deep. That is funny. Managed not to get water in the boat. That's all that matters. All right, don't want to be in there. Yeah, what's on the cut? So, that would take the main tongue there. The other side's hole starting to stack up a little bit. Yeah. And we're going to be on the other side of the island in front of us, but Jerry has found a far river left line over there that he wants to try. That's going to put him going through a hole there on the left side. The straightforward approach would be to kind of stay in the center of the channel and follow the flow. But he wants to kind of step it up and find his own line and get through. So we're just discussing the options here. And that's part of becoming a paddler as well. Scouting a line, picking something you want to do, and then making it happen. He sees something he wants. Let's go for it. Skip over that hole. That's what we're talking about. No, I think you can make it over there. You just stay, you stay left at the beginning of the rapid. Whole then just go right through the hole. Just, go right through it. Yeah. just plug the hole. Well, I'm down. Let's do it. Let's go plug the hole. Some, uh, some lead ins. That's a pretty big hole, but a lot of flush. The cheat line obviously is way over here on the right. You could definitely cheat the right or plug the hole. I don't think the log's in play. I'm thinking the flow's right around five feet. I don't recommend the far left hole. The boil line's about seven or eight feet out from the hole. 
pretty steep and it's a frowny hole. And I, I, I don't know that you would really come out of that one without a rope. Um, so we're gonna run kind of just dead middle here to get set up for the big flush at the end. If you're nervous about this run, there is a cheat line far right here at this level. You can cheat the whole rapid. But um, let's go have a little fun. Smooth. I didn't feel a rock. You see it swallow up my stern? Uh-uh. I was like, like wee! <laughs> I got grabbed for a second and that that's the whole end. The second one? Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's hard to see. That's something I'm still trying to figure out. Like how do you see over the lot? The you have to pick, you have to learn to pick either get better judging distances, you know, as you do it more, uh -huh. or pick little humps of water. Like before you get to the sometimes you think, okay, I see that lump on the but it's like two feet down before the Right. horizon line actually begins so you don't see it from the water so pick like starting at the top 20 feet off that boulder that I feel like yeah and then in your next one your next wave point would be a little further mm -hmm. but some people pick one point so far down that they, that's way too long before they know where they're at gotcha. and then sometimes there's like it's, there's like nothing like big waterfalls but there's a place you want to be mm -hmm. so you're like looking for the undulation and you think you know which one you're like paddling up <laughs> so uh he got stopped for a second you got stern squirted a bit and i almost got stopped but the turbo boosters got me out of there it's probably on video but i was actually when you went down in there i started looking for my line i kind of like enjoying it a little bit you're supposed to get out here to scout it but i couldn't imagine it being bigger than what we just did sometimes is the river pretty much slowed down after a few forward 
There was really no more rapids left, so we just had a nice leisurely float, catching whatever eddies we could find and enjoying the scenery in a day on the water. If I do this run again, I will definitely take out of the Eno River State Park because there really wasn't anything of note, at least nothing worthwhile to be in a whitewater boat from there down. It's always worth it to explore, but sometimes it's not worth it to come back. And that's what this stretch is for a whitewater boater. If you're in a long boat or wreck boat, this would be a fantastic stretch from the state park down here to pleasant green access. And upon getting to the bottom, the river had one little surprise for us that was almost inviting enough to try, except that I like my boat, and this one here is a boat destroyer. Is it? Hold, let's look at it. <laughs> Man, where did that come from? So I know what you're thinking. Pete is about to run this waterfall. This is gonna be awesome. Problem with this one is number one, Jerry has to be in Greensboro in about an hour and 20 minutes. So we're basically out of time. This would probably be 45 minutes to scout, set up safety and run. So we, we can't run it on schedule. Number two, just from a quick glance, this looks like a pretty manky, bony little waterfall that's gonna leave a serious mark on your boat, if not break it. I'd like to see more water coming over that. It's not unrunnable. You're just gonna pay a price with your equipment and we're out of time. Perhaps in the near future, we'll take a better look at that. But for today, it's time to get in the truck, get Jerry to Greensboro and call it a day. Ooh, careful boys. Yeah. <laughs> That's slick. All right, so we're at the bottom of the run. We're at Green Pleasant or something. Pleasant Green Parking Area. Pleasant. So, Pleasant Green Parking, I think is what it is. We yeah. decided if we do this run again, we're gonna park at the Eno River State Park and get out right after the Big Rapid before the trestle bridge because, uh, before the rope bridge, whatever it was, because there was nothing, time, like yeah. literally nothing the entire list last part of the run next time we're going to put in here and see what we got going down the other way but y'all ready to roll oh yeah, oh, yeah. Woo! it's good times